I love the Dominicans. I almost became one. At Yale, I became a Catholic. And as a fresh, young, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed Catholic, I knocked on the door of the rectory at 8 o'clock in the morning. The priest came down and said, uh, what can I do for you? And I said, Father, I want to become a Catholic. His response was, that's nice, so who's the girl? He was a really practical guy. I would come with great questions from the Summa Theologica or from St. John of the Cross, and he said, well, let's look it up in the Penny Catechism. He used to say, uh, you got to walk before you run, and you got to run before you fly. So start with practicing the virtues. It was great advice. I've met a lot of great Dominicans, for instance, Father Romano Cesario, and my intuitive take on the Dominicans is that they're wonderful people. They're, they're strong and gentle at the same time. Uh, their charism is teaching, and especially the teaching of Thomas Aquinas, who is the world's greatest philosopher. Um, the difference between the Dominicans and the Jesuits can best be put in the classic question, when were the Dominicans founded and why? Answer, 12th century to combat the heresy of Albigensianism. When were the Jesuits founded and why? In the 16th century to combat the heresy of Protestantism. Question, when did you meet your last Albigensian? St. Thomas Aquinas is for the whole church. Leo XIII called him the, the master of, of Catholic thought. But the Dominicans are sort of the special custodians of Thomas Aquinas. And he's a philosopher for today. He's, first of all, commonsensical. Uh, secondly, he's clear. He combines clarity and profundity, as no other philosopher does. And thirdly, he's a defender of human reason, which is being attacked today on all sides. Faith and reason, the Pope says, are like two wings of the same bird. Uh, if one fails, the other fails too. So the defense of the faith entails the defense of reason, and Aquinas is the best defender of human reason. Aquinas is really much easier to read than you think if you get past the terminology. Uh, I wrote a book called Summa of the Summa, which is an introduction to Thomas Aquinas for beginners. He himself wrote the Summa Theologica for beginners but it's got a lot of editing and a lot of footnotes to help you through the tough parts. The tough parts are almost always the language. Once you understand the abstract terminology, uh, Aquinas puts everything together in simple syllogistic arguments. A syllogism is really the simplest and most commonsensical form of argument. If all men are mortal and I am a man, I must be mortal. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand that. And he puts almost everything into syllogisms. Is a kind of old-fashioned turn-off word. Uh, speaking, dialoguing, sharing, people like those words better than the word preaching, although it's the same thing. But if we don't preach the word in season and out of season, we don't get the word out, and if we don't get the word out, uh, the world isn't saved. So preaching is indispensable. Flannery O'Connor says somewhere, tell the truth and tell it slant. Uh, the Dominicans' charism is preaching, but preaching isn't just something you do from the pulpit. Preaching is something you can do with your whole life. You can tell a story. You can talk about uh, love. You can talk about surfing. You can point to examples of, of beauty, which are like fingers, which themselves point beyond themselves and above themselves. Uh, there's so many different ways of preaching that uh, there's no paucity of opportunity for everybody to be a preacher. Every, every layman preaches with his own life. St. Paul says uh, the most important epistle is you. People read Christ in you. The basic reason I became a Catholic is the same as the basic reason a Protestant remains a Protestant. I want to be where Jesus wants me to be. I want to be in the church that Jesus founded. As a Protestant, I believe that Jesus founded an essentially Protestant church, which gradually went pagan, bad, and Catholic in the Middle Ages, and that the Protestant reformers simply restored the early church. They weren't the new kids on the block. They just scraped off the Catholic barnacles from Noah's Ark. But I wanted to prove to myself that that was true. So I started reading Catholic sources and the church fathers and early church history, and I was astonished to find how Catholic they were. So my essential reason for being a Catholic is that I am convinced on the basis of the historical evidence that the Catholic Church goes back to Jesus Christ that all the essential doctrines that the Church teaches today were taught from the beginning. For instance, the real presence in the Eucharist. Most Protestants don't believe that. Every Christian in the world believed that, literally, for 1,500 years. How could God let that happen? If 
if the Eucharist is only a holy symbol of Christ and not Christ himself, how could the Holy Spirit have fallen asleep and let every Christian in the world bow down to bread and worship wine thinking it was al Almighty God? Uh, couldn't be. So, uh, even though the Ark looked awfully foreign to me at first, as a Protestant I thought that Catholicism was something alien and other, uh, I saw Christ there. I think the essential reason why even heretical Catholics stay Catholic is the presence of Christ. They may not believe the doctrines, but when you see that little red fire burning above the altar, that, that altar lamp that symbolizes the real presence, you know that's home, and you don't want to run away from home. It, it, in the past, heretics left the church and attacked her from without. Today they stay inside the church and attack her from within. Is that just hypocrisy? Is that just uh, a satanic strategy to, to ruin the church from within? I don't think it's merely that. I think on the part of most of these bad Catholics, it's the lingering belief in the real presence. That's the fire, that's the fireplace, that's home. You can't go anywhere else. One of the wonderful things the Dominicans have done for the church is to give the laity a beautiful and practical method of daily prayer, Magnificat. I'd highly uh, recommend everyone use it. Uh, if you want to pray with the mind of the church, 